Dear students, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Let us uh, start a new chapter in zoology, which is Animal Kingdom. My dear students, as far as this chapter is concerned, it is going to involve all the information about the animals which are present on the surface of the earth. Now, animals, who are the organisms which you will call animals? The answer is that any organism who will fulfill the four conditions which I'll be talking about now, if any organism fulfills those four conditions, you will label that organism as an animal and you will place that organism in animal kingdom. Now, what are those four conditions? The first condition is the organism must be multicellular. You understand what is multicellular? Organisms must be made up of many cells. So if an organism is made up of many cells, it fulfills one of the condition to be labeled as animal. The second condition is that its cells should not have cell wall. That means cell wall must be, that must be absent. So all animal cells, they lack cell wall. The third condition is that the organism or the cells of the organisms, they must be eukaryotic. That means the cells must have well-developed nucleus. You understand this word. What is a eukaryotic cell? A cell which has well-developed nucleus. That means the DNA, the genetic material is covered inside nuclear envelope and the cell has all the cell organelles. Okay, such a cell is called a eukaryotic cell. So the first condition for an organism to be called as an animal is that it should be multicellular. Its cells should not have cell wall. That means the cell wall in the cells of this organism must be absent. And the third condition is that the organism must be made up of the eukaryotic cells. The fourth condition which an organism has to satisfy is that it needs to be a heterotrophic organism. Heterotrophic organism. Heterotrophic means that this organism always feeds or it always eats ready-made food. Ready-made food. That means they are the consumers. Unlike plants, plants are producers. They can perform photosynthesis. They are autotrophs, but animals are heterotrophs. They are heterotrophic organisms. So if you will find any of the organism fulfilling these four conditions, you will call that organism an animal and that organism will be placed in animal kingdom. So what are the four conditions? Multicellularity, absence of cell wall, the organism must be eukaryotic, and it must be heterotrophic in nature. Now, my dear students, you have millions of organisms present on the surface of the earth. We cannot study or investigate them individually. So we have placed all the animals in this bigger group, which you call animal kingdom, but this has been divided into 11 different phylas. So we will be discussing each and every phylum in detail before going to the different subgroups. That means the different phyla of the animal kingdom. Let us first of all try and understand the diversity of the animal kingdom. Let us understand how diverse is animal kingdom. So we can uh, detect that diversity of, in animal kingdom on the basis of so let us take, for example, on the basis of habitat. 
Habitat is the place where the organisms live. On the basis of habitat, you could have two major types of organisms, two major types of animals rather. Number one are the aquatic animals, And number two are the terrestrial animals. I hope you understand these terms. Aquatic animals will all be all the animals which are living in water. And terrestrial animals will include all the animals which are living on land. Okay, so the difference is their habitat, the place the, where the organism lives, the place where the animal lives. Now, aquatic animals could further be divided into uh, three different categories. Okay, so you will have number one here, which you call zooplankton's. So see the diversity of the animals on the basis of their habitat. So you have zooplanktons. Now what are zooplanktons? They are those organisms which you will find freely drifting. They are freely floating on the surface of the earth. So let me write down. They are free floating or you can say drifting on the surface of water. On the surface of water. The best example here, it could be that of the protesters, small protozoans, your small crustaceans. You find these organisms drifting on the surface of the uh, uh, water. The second category are the nectons. Nectons. Nectons, you will find them within the water body. You will not find them on the surface. You will find them uh, freely swimming. So they are they they are freely swimming in water body. Say, for example, you can think of the fishes, and you can think of the sharks. Okay, they are called nectons. The third category is that of the benthic organisms. Benthic. Benthic are those animals which are ex ab absolutely, they are exclusively present at the bottom. They are present on the bottom of the water body. So in this category, you will find out animals like star fishes are there. This is the versatile example of benthic organisms. Or you have some sponges. Or you can think of sea cucumber. There are some of the animals which are benthic. Now, remember that these two organisms, which you will find in, uh, you know, open water, zooplanktons and nectons, you will find them in open waters. These animals, you can use another term for them, they are called pelagic animals. They are called pelagic animals. Remember this term also. Okay, now Zooplanktons and nectons and benthic animals are three different types of aquatic animals, correct? Similarly, we can have variety of terrestrial animals. Let me quote some examples over here or some categories. You can find, my dear students, you can find number one are the fossorial animals. Now for fossorial animals, they are those who live underground. So they are the animals who live underground. You can call them burrowing animals. You can call them burrowing animals. Now, 
Say, for example, you have the rabbits and the earthworms. They are the best example of fossorial animals. The second category are the cursorial. Cursorial animals. Now, who are the cursorial animals? These are the animals which are fast runners. They are fast running animals, like your horses, deers, and dogs. The third type is your scansorial. Scansorial animals. These are the animals which climb on the walls. They climb on walls like your lizards. Okay, they are called scansorial animals. The next category are the arboreal animals. So you see the different variety of animals arboreal animals. They are the animals which live, which thrive on the trees. So for example, you have bats, you have monkeys, you have squirrels. They generally live above the ground on trees. They're called arboreal animals. Another category are the aerial animals. Now, who will you call aerial animals? They are the animals which can fly like your birds or your insects which have wings. So winged animals are called aerial animals, those which can fly. Similarly, you have some of the animals which are uh, parasites in nature. So you have uh, other than aquatic animals or terrestrial animals, you can have other categories also, whereby uh, you can uh, think about these organisms, like let me quote over here, you can think about organisms which can act as parasites, like you have different worms which can act as parasite, right? Let's say for example, you are round worms or you are tapeworms. They are also animals. So there are some animals which live independently, which live alone. You call them solitary animals or some of the animals, they prefer living in colonies. So you have some animals which live alone, you call them solitary. Whereas some of the animals, they live in colonies, they live in groups whereby they help each other. You call those animals uh, colonial animals. So in this way, on the basis of the habitat or the behavior of the animal, you can categorize these animals into different types, like what, whatever I told you right about right now. You have zooplankton, nectons, benthic, fossorials, cursorials, scansorials, arboreals, aerials, parasites, solitary animals, colonial animals which live in colonies. Now, these are the different types of animals. Similarly, my dear students, animals could vary upon, uh, depending upon their level of organization. So one level of uh, diversity was on the basis of habitat. Now you can see another level of diversity on the basis of the level of organization. based on the level of organization, you can have some organisms which will be uh, number one category, they will be having cellular level of organization. Now, what do, what do we mean by cellular level of organization is that these organisms will merely be made up of aggregation of the cells. They will be made up of aggregation of the cells. That means they will definitely be multicellular, but you will find that these cells have no coordination. They have no coordination, means they work in the dependent of each other. You will find this uh, property in animals like, say, for example, your sponges. So sponges have cellular level of organization. Now, some of the organisms will be now advanced and they will be having what? They will be having the second level of organization that is the tissue level of 
organization. In case of tissue level of organization, again, the organism will be multicellular. It will be made up of many cells. And you will see that there is a definite coordination between the cells. There's a definite coordination between the cells, but uh, you will not see complex uh, organs in this organism. You, its body will be made up of these tissues. The best example for this category, this was the example for the cellular level of organi organization. The best example for the tissue level of organization is that of your hydra. Hydra, which belongs to Celentrata. The category which they belong to, you will come and understand that ahead. So here you can remember Hydra has tissue level of organization. The third level of organization will be the organ level of organization. Organ level of organization. What you will find here is that again, the organism will be multicellular as was in the previous cases. Again, there will be coordination between the cells. There will be coordination, but here now there will be coordination between tissues. You will have varieties of tissues and there will be coordination of the tissues. And here you will see now tissues forming what? Organs and organs forming what? Organ systems. Okay, so in this organism or in this level of organ organization, you will find that uh, the organism will have a well developed body in which there will be different organs and organ systems performing specific functions. See, all your higher animals, when you talk about your higher animal, that means higher than your sealant uh, traits, higher animals have or organ level of uh, organization. See in them what you will find that there will be different systems for performing different tasks of the body that we call what? What do we call that thing? We call that division of labor. So in these organisms, you will be having the digestive system. Say for example, digestive system will wholly be responsible for digestion of food. It has nothing to do with uptake of oxygen and release of carbon dioxide. For that, this organism will be having a separate system called the respiratory system and for the excretion of the substances out from the body this organism will be having an excretory system so in these organisms what you find is that there is division of labor there are different systems which are meant for performing specific functions there are different tissues which are meant for performing different functions tissues forming organs organs forming organ systems and every organ system is performing a it's performing a specific task due to which this this type of level becomes the most complex system of organization so again you saw diversity of organisms based on the level of organization so earlier we saw diversity based on habitat and now we saw diversity based on level of organization now moving ahead i will now show you the diversity based upon the body plan the diversity of the organisms based upon the body plan of the organism now what is basically the body plan? Let me write down first of all, the third characteristic, the third feature, the third property which we are understanding is the body plan. Now organisms are different from each other in terms of their body plan. See, we have three body plans. Again, body plans are of three types. So you have first, second, and third body plan. So then let me show you the three body plan. The first body plan is the cell aggregate body plan. The second is the blind sac body plan. And the third is the tube within a tube 
body plans so organisms could have these three different types of body plans now what is this cell aggregate body plan in this case my dear students in cell aggregate body plan you will find that the organism's body is merely made up of an aggregation of the cells that means here the organism is having what here the organism is merely having cellular level of organic zation that means the body of the organism is just made up of an aggregation of the cells which majorly work independent of each other which was the case with the sponges so the first body plan is very simple it is the body of it is such a body plan in which the organism's body is very simple it's merely made up of um, many cells but all of the cells are having a cellular level of organization they are working there's no coordination between the cells and they are working independent of each other now once we say blind sac body plan what does it mean that it is here again you will have many cells but now the the body will have some definite shape and the property over here is that here the animal has only one opening in the body one opening in the body only one opening in the body so you will have suppose say for example this is the body of the organism suppose i am showing you the hydra it has only one opening which is going to lead into the body cavity so the same so let me show you suppose this is the hydra It, these are the tentacles now this opening right now over here this is the single opening which is going to act both as mouth as well as as anus so the same opening is going to act as a gate for ingestion of food and same opening is meant for ingestion of waste so here what you find there is just a sac the organism's body has a sac this is the pose the digestive system and it has only one opening which is going to serve both the purposes uh, this opening is going to act as mouth the same opening is act going to act as the anus if the body plan is like this we call it a blind sac body plan and you will find such a body plan in your cilan traits like hydra and in your flatworms which are called platyhelminthes okay so these organisms are going to have blind sac body plan now as far as tube within a tube body plan is concerned here what you find is that the digestive system the alimentary canal has both the openings mouth as well as anus so can we say that here uh, we will see a complete alimentary canal what do i mean mean by complete alimentary canal that means here the alimentary canal will have two openings one will be the mouth and another will be the anus what was the case over here the case in blind sac was that here the digestive system was it was incomplete what was incomplete the digestive system was incomplete but here what do you see the digestive system is complete there are two separate openings one is mouth another is anus say for example i'm showing you over here say for example this is a organism let me make say for example a fish over here okay so you will see one of the opening over here one of the opening over here which is going to serve as a mouth and say for example the this is the digestive system the intestines and all and finally you have an opening here which is the anus so you, this organism has complete digestive system so it will it has which type of configuration it has which type of body plan it seems that it has two tubes okay so you have a tube within a tube body plan a tube one tube it's opening the mouth and you have another opening which is the anus okay 
okay so that's why this is called tube within a tube body plan now there is an important term which you need to understand over here if we put this tube within a tube body plan into consideration we have to understand about one more thing as far as which uh, body plan is concerned as far as tube within a tube body plan is concerned as far as this body plan is concerned we need to understand about one more thing the term is blastopore you have to understand about this now what is this blastopore if we go uh, through our embryonic development initially we were just one cell what is that called zygote and this zygote undergoes repeated divisions and it results in the formation of what we call the medulla okay this medulla is basically a mass of the cells and medulla then uh, differentiates it then forms a structure like this some of the cells of the medulla they form the surface of the a uh, spherical structure and rest of the cells are shifted towards one pole okay so what what do you see here is now medulla is converted into this structure which is called a blastocyst what is this structure called blastocyst so this aggregation of cells on one no one side or one knob is called the embryonal knob try and understand we have to come to this term of blastopore and then we, then i'll tell you what is the importance of blastopore so this uh, mass of cells over here is the embryonal knob and this cavity over here is the blasto seal okay so what is it it is the cavity it's a fluid filled cavity now what happens next is that a kind of invagination appears in the blasto seal a kind of invagination will occur now see this membrane will be invaginated and you will see an invagination in the blasto seal okay this invagination which has appeared on the blasto seal let, let me make it a completely spherical this invagination uh, which you will find on the blasto seal let me make it uh, clearly so you have this something like this so you are from this structure what will arise is kind of invagination okay so this was the spherical structure now i am showing it in a simplified manner you will see what appearing you will see this invagination appearing this invagination or you can call it a pore also this invagination is the blasto pore okay now from the same blasto pore what is going to arise this blasto pore is going to result in the formation of say for example this pore forms the mouth and then this invagination extends and the next pore is formed which will automatically be the anus so from blastopore this opening mouth will be formed or it could happen that this blastopore will result in the formation of anus so you have the difference now you have some organisms in which mouth is formed first that is followed by anus and you have some organisms in which anus is formed first and then mouth okay so blastopore can form mouth and later what will be formed is anus or blastopore can form anus and what will be later formed is mouth depending upon that the organism in which you will see the mouth appearing first you will call them pro sto protostomes you will call them sorry you will call them pro 
two stones. So protostomes are the organism in which mouth appears first and then anus appears. But the organism in which anus appears first and then mouth is developed, they are called deutero. They are called deuterostomes. So you have now two different types of animals. You have two different categories of animals. One are the protostomes in which you will see a mouth will be formed first from the blastopore and then anus will be formed. And you will have deuterostomes in which you will see that the anus will be formed first that will be form, followed with the formation of the mouth. Okay. Now, who are deuterostomes? What are, what are the examples for deuterostomes? You have to remember that echinoderms. Echinoderms. It's a, it's a huge group of organisms. And all of you are chordates. They are deuterostomes. Rest all phyla, rest all groups are protostomes. So this involves rest all. Rest all. Except whom? Except you have to you have to uh, you know keep this as exception. Re except echinoderms and chordates. So the, you, these things are often asked in examinations like give the examples of protostomes. So protostomes are uh, the organisms other than echinoderms and chordates because echinoderms and chordates are deutero uh, stones. Okay. So till this point, I gave you this diversity of plants and animals, sorry, diversity of animals. We're not talking about plants, sorry. So I gave you the diversity of animals based on the habitat they live, based on the body plan they have, and based on the level of organization they have. In the next lecture, we will talk about furthermore aspects on which we can uh, classify the diversity. So we have some more introductory lectures. Then after finishing the introductory lectures, we will go and discuss each and every group of animal kingdom in detail. Till then, take care of yourself. Allah Hafiz.